Wow, that's a very pretty twirl, Isla. Let's see it one more time. Wow, I can't do that. Hey internet, about a month ago I went down to Mitchell Hora's farm down in southeast Iowa. Mitchell is my co-host for the Fieldwork podcast. Today, he's actually coming up here, he's going to visit my farm, see what kind of conditions I'm farming him in, and I'm going to show him what real farm machinery looks like. Did we decide to get the deep bander out to show them? We did. What do you think, Isla? Do they want the wings up or the wings down? Down, we should put them down. Okay. Go oh, up. All right, we'll leave them up then. Ah, there we go. Should we show Didge the camera? See what she does. Didge, Didge, don't you want to talk on camera? You want to say something? No. Gone. How's the racetrack coming, Onyx? Good? He had a packer out there last night and this morning. He was watering the track. He's been working pretty hard on that thing. That well, that was Oliver? He was watering. Your friend Oliver. Mitchell, you better hurry up. It's getting awfully dark to the northwest. See? That kid never stops on that thing lately. All right, it looks like Mitchell is just arriving on the farm. I checked the corn. By way of cornfield, corny situation. It's a long walk from Iowa all the way up there. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a big field of dreams, <laughs> isn't it? big field of dreams. You didn't pee in there, right? No, I didn't pee. All right. I found corn that was really thirsty, though, and I watered it. All right. Well, I won't ask anymore. <laughs> so what's your what's the outlook on that? I mean, it looks fine. It looks nice and long. This one was on the end, so I'm sure he's not very representative of the rest of the field, but... I think it's gonna be all right. Most of the rest of them are double that. Double that, yeah, huge. twice that just size. Like massive, like yeah, baseball bats. Baseball bat. Yeah, kind of gonna have to have, have your combine really tuned in to be able to take all that corn in. It's a deer. Oh. Yeah, well, it'll be good. So it's gonna be like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm here with the Minnesota Public Radio Fieldwork crew. Yeah. As you can tell, looking professional, and a few kids are trailing with. We're gonna go for a quick tour around the farm. I'll show Mitchell what's going on up here in West Central Minnesota. Have you ever been this far from Iowa? No, never. No? I don't know why you would ever want to leave Iowa, but here we are. We won't get into that. <laughs> yeah, so this is obviously the grain setup. We're building a new, that's going to be a new holding tank, new wet yeah. bin for us. Yeah. 30 feet, nine ring, about 20,000. Okay. So we'll have the, the new bin and the old wet tank here together. They'll be both plumbed into the same conveyor. So yeah. we'll have about 30,000 bushels of, of holding capacity then. Yeah. And then everything ties together through the leg. Yep. Pump it through a lot faster. You're gonna need it here this year. Well, gonna we're gonna need it. See, you're in yeah, Southern you're Iowa. It. You don't need such a big grain dryer. Right, so. right. We, it's not uncommon for us. We try not to, but it's not uncommon to take 30% corn. Oh yeah, yeah. 30, 32, at 34 we start shutting things down because yeah. then you're just making cereal out of it. If we've got, it's just mush if, coming It out. is, it's terrible, I hate it. If we've got 24%, 25%, yeah. I mean, we'll do it, but that'd be kind of on the upper end. See, and if we start harvesting 24% corn, you're like, this is We great. are super excited. <laughs> Harvest is, is gonna be easy. Yeah, going fast. Onyx. I, you should maybe just set that back down. <laughs> Sledgehammers are so fun. You don't have that on video yet? I, I think he made sure he got it on video. <laughs> that's that's a lot of hits. Like, yeah. Onyx picks up giant sledgehammer. Let's see what happens. Yeah, let's see what happens. Go ahead and push some stuff, see what happens. Well, see, it's farmer talk. It's, it's good farmer layout. Red, stop, green, go. Yeah, but there's it's no green. green. It's black though. Ours is green. It's easier. <laughs> See, it's the opposite of the mics at NPR, where red means the mics are on. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't all, make sense. No wonder all thrown off. Yeah. So we've got the air system out the back of the dryer. I don't remember how yours yours was. Ours is it like auger? At all. Ours is all internal, and it augers at all. Yeah. Ours okay. Ours isn't air. Ours isn't air pushed at all. Ours okay. is all augers and conveyors. So we've got the air delivery to all the 
all the bins so we've got an exchanger back there to switch it around and move it to different bins which we don't have to mess with augers which is sweet yeah, that's, but that's... it presents its own challenges then once in a while get stuff clogged once every couple of years a pipe will blow apart oh, yeah. and you end up with a thousand bushels in the ground that yeah. you got to back up wow. um, so you try to do you, we check on it t three times a night all fall um, so we're out here quite a bit with that it's noisy oh yeah so that's a downfall it's really loud try to park the trucks around it at night to block some of the sound but yeah. i mean ultimately it's a lot nicer than dealing with augers yeah especially with this many bins around what you'd have to deal with because you're just augering so far ours is right. so condensed in that our augers are all super short yep so not nearly the whole different deal yeah yeah totally different cover what, what did you call that thing a cover crop cedar a cover crop cedar yeah so i mean a lot of the components are the same thing yeah what we did here really but essentially it's, it's kind of like a makeshift strip till strip machine till, yeah, yeah so we'll put our our p and our p k and, yeah. our oh, k and our p separate we've got them separate and do all of it separate That's cool. yep and then we've, we variable rate each product by itself sure so there's a prescription for each one yeah and then uh what we do is feed it through this is a chisel plow right i mean that's all it is is a chisel plow and we switched it delivery on the back yes so what we did was we switched the shanks from i believe it was on 12 inch spacings yeah we switched it over to 15 inch spacings yep. and then every other one has an applicator tube on the back yeah yeah so half of them are just doing tillage the other half are doing tillage and applying the p and k yeah um we did have when we first got it for the first year we put n on with it yeah what we ran into was the anhydrous applicators show the camera here the anhydrous applicators came down right here right. the problem was the air from this system was blowing out a lot of the end uh, so we were chasing that yeah. so what we need to do ideally the best thing to do would be to move the the end application to the shanks that are not running fertilizer sure. but, but that's with anhydrous then you have that other thing i'd more so you could run ams or something like that or urea through have a third the tank. same well but you could you could run them with your p and k or something like that if there was one of them that was going to be kind of consistent right you know or you put your p and k together and you variable rate that on one and then you do your flat rate yeah master urea i think just because of what we save by doing variable rate on both the p and k and the variability of it it wouldn't work to blend them the same yeah i think a third tank would be the answer but then i then you get into putting urea on in the fall because we do this that's the other thing is we do this as early as we can right. to get it done oh yeah because otherwise we end up with a year like last year where it freezes out and we can't get to it all mm -hmm. um but you know you obviously you don't want to put n on when the ground is still 60 yeah, degrees yeah when it's so warm like that so it, that the, adding the n to it presents enough challenges where we just decided we'll put the p and k on yeah and put the n on later whether yeah, it's yeah. urea in the spring or anhydrous yeah, afterwards yeah. No, it was when we, when we put the NH3 tank behind it, it was like 130 feet long. <laughs> yeah, you get to the... And it actually worked out pretty good the way they had it rigged up or the oh, way it still is. So the hitch comes out here, yeah. you can pull, it's just on a winch. Yeah, yeah. So you can pull it, you can pull that out 30 feet, hook uh, to the anhydrous tank, and then run the winch up and it pulls it up and then you just couple it to that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's ridiculously long. Yeah. And it looked even more ridiculous when we had the four wheel drive, we had a 9630 sure. we pulled yeah, it with. Yeah. That's a John Deere tractor. Yeah, John Deere. So this building, this shed, we built in 2013, actually 14. Yeah. The old building that was here was actually open to the east. It was an old cattle yard building. Oh yeah. So it was only 10 feet tall, so you couldn't get much in here. Oh gosh. And we had an ice storm in March of 2013 that took that down. Yeah. So we wiped that building out and then the next summer we put this up and then uh, another year later we finished off the interior in here. So this has been huge for us to have something with sidewalls to get the big rigs in and actually work on stuff in the winter yeah which we couldn't do before we were working out of that so shed, cold yeah which is no insulation well there it is insulated and heated in there but it, you couldn't get anything in the door it was too small at this yeah. point so so this has been big for us been a, a big change for us so this is uh this is a real planter oh. they paint them green ah, i'm just I some of the viewers are going to be all mad at me now. yeah jeez. i have to settle them down everyone's going to be the comments are just going to be bad that's okay as long <laughs> as there's comments there I guess. they'll say what they want you can't stop them no, they're good. animals right. so we've had this planter for uh six years now i think um and we put the row cleaners on yeah. you're not supposed to call them trash whippers anymore no, they are row cleaners uh we got them from yetter so they're air adjust up yeah. and down from in the cab so they are the cadillac option oh. um, but what i found actually was that on our conventional till stuff 
I really don't think, I mean. No, you don't really need them. Not really, no. You're I mean, for, at times. Dirt. You're just pushing dirt, really, that's it. Yeah, what I found is if I'd run them, just if I'd run, run the soil right here, yeah. it would knock the rocks out. And it did, one thing it did help a lot for is knocking uh, root balls out of the way. Yeah, the yeah. root balls from the corn. Because yeah. we have had problems with them plugging up the closing wheels. Sure. So they did help that issue a lot. I think in a situation where you're talking about no-till or planting through cover crop. Then you want them. They, they're huge for us. Yeah, I would assume so actually, yeah. Yeah, they're huge for us. Ours are on the, they are running hydraulic down, down pressure with the Delta Force system. Yeah, so yours are built by Yetter? No. Delta they're the precision, precision system. Planting, yeah. Okay, so precision. I believe they're actually manufactured by Yetter. Oh, it could be. For precision. Sure. I think. Maybe I got that wrong. Somebody a bunch of it. people will chew me out yeah, for that if I did get it wrong. That's but yeah, so that helps us to be able to go through and cut through that layer. Yep. And essentially what it does is it just pushes everything to the side. Yep. And we found that with that living cover crop, it actually just kind of like rips it to the side. Oh, so and I was like going to ask. clears things really well. You know, that it's actually like alive and then just kind of rips that out. Yep. And then I've got a nice little furrow. So is it more important to have these or less important on planting green versus planting more on no-till? More important. With the planting green? I think so. Okay. Probably. And um, as far as being able to keep that consistency, because you're going to be going through right. where you do have a little you know, hill of roots or whatever, mounds, and it's not going to be super even. Yep. So having something that's adjusting and changing all the time helps to really make sure that we're getting consistency yeah. to that depth and to the seed placement. And that's what I figured. I didn't really have problems with them. I just wasn't, in certain situations, a lot of our conventional till stuff, I wasn't sure we needed them or not. And a lot of guys, there are a lot of guys that run them and really like Instead them. of running the smooth closing wheels, a lot of guys will get them spiked and yep. get something a little different. Ours yep. was just the, the case, like, flat press wheel. Oh, okay. And Did you go to the spiked ones then? No, we haven't. We still have just that flat closing wheel that's just right over the top. But some guys will see that... You know, with a no-till situation, you don't have the soil there really loose. Yeah. That something like this is easily just kind of push it back down together. Yeah. Where with the no-till and the cover crops, you don't have that loose soil to push back together. Yeah. And so what we what we found then with the press wheel is we we have enough that's kind of there that we press back in, um, where now we've got the structure built up so it does kind of crumble back in together. But a lot of guys will use a little bit of a more of a spike, something to kind of get it chewed up and yep. free up a little bit of soil to fill that furrow. So I've got a good buddy that tried the spiked ones last year and took them off after 40 acres and chucked them behind the shed because oh, all geez. they did was gather rocks oh, in yeah. a conventional till situation. Sure, sure, sure. So yeah, I, I always like what we had, but we have, we'll go out to it too. We've got seven acres of zero till, I guess I'd call it. Yeah, it, yeah. it was CRP stuff that we planted green right, right into. Yeah. And we had a lot of trouble getting that furrow to close. Right. So I had to really crank the pressure up on these. But in a situation like that, I think the spiked ones would be That's the way to what, go. Well, because that'd be very similar to, to our stuff there, where that soil is all super held together by all the right. roots. It's not just going to, like, fall back in. Yep, yep. So and it's an easy just, change. Easy you know, change, it's not but, difficult. but I think that's something though for this conversation that that's real money though too. Yeah, you have to change it for every single unit, right? You know, and it, it adds up when you got a big planter. And so, Mitchell, did you want to sit in a real tractor, or okay, are you are you scared? Of it? I'm, 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 Isn't it lovely? Oh. Look at that! Wow. Oh, that's from the kid loosening it up. Oh yeah, you got to play with this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, got to play with the. It's like a kid knob. Man, fun stuff. Oh, so then the the Yetter setup has its own. It's got its own screen, which they said that they could. It's pretty easy to get it run into the twenty six thirty, the deer monitor. Yeah. So I don't need that, but at the time they installed it, they didn't have the hardware oh. in stock to get that onto there. So I just ran so with this screen. That, yeah. Next year I will put deal. it down. Yeah. Yeah, not a big. Deal. So that is our sprayer, forty eight thirty. It's uh, it's the old style deer sprayer. We. We don't put nitrogen on with it. Um, actually, we don't do any split application. Almost nobody around here does, at least not from here west. Yeah. So we put our nitrogen on in one shot before we plant the crop, and then uh, this is this is herbicides, pesticides, yep. insecticides. Spray, sprayed on. What's that? Fungicides getting sprayed on. Yeah, about now. 
Yeah. Which we, we yeah, actually talked this morning. That. Normally this week we are spraying for soybean aphids yeah. like crazy. Yeah. And this year we're going to go out and, and try so, to find some. But yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking five to ten per plant. Yeah. No and it's don't. late. I don't think we're going to have to spray the aphids. Yeah. Normally that's what we mix in our fungicide pass with. So we're actually, we were talking this morning about whether or not we're going to throw that fungicide out there or not. Yeah. Might not really need it this year. It's so That's, late, and like I haven't seen a lot of disease either. There's guys talking about you still do it or not. I mean, a lot of times just for the health side yeah. of like the crop health side. Yep. It'll still pay for itself. Um, but it might. Might. Yeah. Now it's like kind of back and forth. Right. But hopefully the crop will be kind of worth something this year. Uh, yeah. It's looking. kind of worth something. So anyway. hopefully it'll be worth a little bit and <laughs> yeah. make it a little bit more enticing to right. get the economics to work out. Somebody might want some of this crop. Maybe this somebody will buy it. Yeah. That'd be nice. If we have well, to keep it. If we could keep not fun. If we could keep the orange guy off of Twitter might help. Yeah. See now I just made more viewers mad again. <laughs> just a joke, guys. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> so... Okay, Mitchell. This is our most prized piece of machinery. I like it. This is an old bread truck that we now hold water in. <laughs> That's really all there is to know about that. The brakes on it lock up every spring. You got to climb under it and hammer on them. 100%. And, yeah. Yeah. But it's a it's a necessary evil. Yeah. yeah. You got to have the old bread truck. You got to have the old bread truck. <laughs> every time. It blows the breaker every time you flip the lights on. It, we have too many lights on one. All, all it does is trip it, and then you flip it again, flip it again. and then you're good to go. Oh, that's good. In the summer, it happens right away. In the winter, it takes 10 seconds. Oh, and then it breaks, and then it flips it? Yeah. And then you have It'd to be nice if I knew an electrician or something. Car owner, Corey. <laughs> the heck? He's a character. <laughs> In North Dakota, we do that by hand. Oh, you have hand. Well, that's what Oh, that's cute. Up. You have rocks you can pick up by hand. <laughs> wow. Yeah, big rocks. Poor fella. <laughs> we have Volkswagens that we have to use this machine for. <laughs> To, to get them out of the ground and throw them in there and drag them to the edge of the field. That's awesome. If you're interested in taking any with you, we'll you take are. The rocks back. Yeah, you are more than welcome. We'll load them up in Annie's car and <laughs> them back to Iowa. I'm not helping you load them. <laughs> so we got the grain cart loaded up right now because we actually load uh, soybean trucks out with this, yeah. so that we can use the scale and know what's coming in and out. Yeah. Um, we've actually got these people watching don't even know this yet, but we have a. Brand new grain cart coming Ooh. for this fall. Ooh. I'm not going to say where it's coming from or, or what it is. That's a secret. But it's big, it's on tracks, and it's built by the people that built this seed tender right there. Ask me that again. Okay. What are you tendering with, with this guy? This was our seed tender for like ah. 15 years. But Oops. now we got the J&M LC290, so this just sat here this year. Yeah. But I bet you can tender like your P&K and stuff with this, though, too. Yes. I, I, yeah, we, we would, but yeah. You probably wouldn't have to. The co-op will bring it out. Or That's the thing is the co-op usually brings out the truck. And, yeah. Because we're, I mean, we're moving eight tons of it at a time, so. Yeah. This guy doesn't quite hold that. Right. Not quite. I mean, you could maybe hold it with this guy, but it wouldn't want to move. It wouldn't want to move. It doesn't exactly. It's probably not going to auger it all that fast. I know it looks like a fancy hot rod, <laughs> but it's not as powerful as it looks. It doesn't. <laughs> this is what the YouTube viewers seem to love. Green combines. Oh. It's not a new series. We don't have the S series because S series are expensive. Oh. But this is uh, this is a 2012, 2011 or 12. It's the last year of the old uh, 70 series. Oh. We got it hopped up. We put uh, we put a we reprogrammed it to add 100 horsepower to it last year. Yeah, so that was cool. That's I wish cool. it had tracks sometimes, but the duals are nice. The dual wheels, yeah, you yep. got enough spread out. You have duals on yours? <clears throat> no, our, we used to have duals, but now we just have the fat tires. Oh, you like do? The fat, yeah, we like the low pro? The mud, hogs, the mud hog fat tires. Oh, okay. Those are cool, too. There's a lot of those around Does here. Does this have GPS on it, too? Auto steer? Yes. Okay. So it's got row sense. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah so the then it does also, it'll track on you your soybeans, do. too. Yeah. Yeah. The old one, we had a second machine, uh, 9650. That one was 20 years old, but it was low hours, so we ran two machines on soybeans just to get us to corn faster. Sure. We actually uh, upgraded and sold our old our two auger headers for a 40-foot flex draper. Yeah. So for anybody, especially farmers, know that those new flex drapers are pricey. Yeah. So we traded the two auger headers, sold off that other machine, and invested in the flex draper now. So instead of having two machines with the old headers, we'll have one wider header on this machine. So it's just another, it's one less hassle. Yeah. 
Well, and the biggest thing there being just the people side of things too. Yeah. You have the labor to get it all done. It adds a whole nother logistical complication once yeah. you have a second machine. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mitchell just told me he had a drone that came and you spread on cover crop into standing time. corn. Yep. So we've tried four times, I believe it is now, and we have spread using an airplane into standing corn and soybeans. Yep. And gotten just about zero growth out of it. Right. And every year we tried it earlier and earlier thinking that was our issue. Um, we made sure we got it down before leaf drop on the soybeans. We got yep. plenty of rain. The one thing we didn't do is we've never tried rye because we're scared of it taking off in the spring. Yeah, yeah. But we've tried barley, oats, radishes, turnips. I mean, we've tried yeah. a pretty good blend. Well, and I think it just hasn't worked out. For me, it's it's using the rye, but then you'll want to get it in there and terminate it really early in the spring. In the spring, yeah. yeah. And that's what we're scared of is if it's too wet and we can't get out there. Yeah, we can't get it terminated. Because yeah. my buddy, so my buddy Randy had that exact scenario. They planted rye one fall, actually put it on and, and incorporated it with a chisel plow. Yeah. And the next spring, they planted right through the stuff and it was beautiful. Yeah. So the following year, they did like 2,000 acres of this stuff yeah. and it was a disaster because it was a wet spring. They couldn't get to it. They couldn't kill it off. Stuff was like two feet tall. With they didn't, they didn't, yeah, they didn't know what to do. They couldn't get in there. They couldn't plant through it. They couldn't till it up. Yeah. It was a disaster. Yeah, that's a mess. But so ours, we like to plant into it when it's green and like yeah. 8 to 12 inches tall. We yeah. plant corn into that and then spray Which is what off. they did the first year and it worked then out well for them. spray it off within a couple of days after that. But yeah, yeah, you do have to be kind of careful because a lot of times in the spring, when it's time to plant corn, it's time to plant it's corn. It's time to go. Not slow down and try to spray. Yeah. But it does take kind of that balancing effort there. Right. But that's probably probably the number of acres is critical too. Yeah. To start really small and, and right. they needed to work into it slower maybe. Right. Which is what the so, first year as well as it worked, they were all excited about. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, we got this. We're gonna plant rye on everything for a cover crop. Yeah. What we so in our first year, our first year is when we had the disaster. Okay. With our cover crop. And we had rye and we planted it way too thick also. Yeah. And didn't get it terminated correctly. So not only did we have this mass of stuff growing that was way too thick, but then didn't get it killed off the right way either. So now we've drastically lowered our rates also. Yep. So now you don't have as much out there that even if you're not as timely with your termination, it's you don't have as, as much to deal with. Yeah. So that, that's helped. Sure. But have you ever had to kill it with an airplane? No. No. No, but we have the haggy that will go over it. And uh, so like on our corn this year, we sprayed some of it like seven days later. After planting. After planting. After planting, yeah. Yep. And then spray it off. The beans, we actually waited and didn't kill it for like 40 days after planting the beans. Sure. So those beans were like V2, V3. They were Coming big. through pretty tall. And then we sprayed it off. The huh. other one, in order to not have as much material, we used winter wheat instead of cereal rye. Sure. Because the rye will get freaking five, The wheat isn't going to take off on you. The like wheat's that. only going to get like three foot tall. It's not going to go yeah. as fast. Yeah. It'll still grow and get obviously decent size, but it's not going to be as aggressive as that rye. Yep. And for about the same price. There's there's tons of milkweed around here. I've got like just in the last three years, it just exploded and yeah. came back. Yeah. We went for a drive. I figured I better show Mitchell our zero till soybeans out here. Oh yeah. We've got quite quite a mix. I've had a lot of people <laughs> asking online too about them, but we got spots that look just fine, and we got spots that look like it's almost dead and then we got this spot, spot where, where I dumped the planter where you dumped the we were done planting for the year so so obviously not great not great no definitely does not look definitely like the stuff great. across the road so how come your other some of your weeds are dying some of them are really not like the grass I can't believe the grass you didn't get a better kill well yeah I can't either because this actually this yeah, this is uh, Roundup, so the yeah, grass didn't kill stuff. very well. I don't yeah, understand it. Weird. Some of it's just a different bunch of grass and whatnot. Yeah. I don't know if it was that thick or what happened, but we used a high water rate. Um, and then we got spots like this where there's some beans Nothing. that didn't even come up. Yeah. And then, I mean, these this looks okay, but yeah, right way here. behind. Because there's got to be an old strip of some. Oh, I bet. Is there a wire or something that they buried here? No. No, this is this is probably just planter tracks where I drove. Right, so right, when right. when I planted, but as far as the strip that's going this way, it's like right here that looks pretty good. Might be where I stopped and lifted the planter up. Sure. Weird. 
So when we planted this, it was obviously planted late. It was our yeah, last yeah. stuff planted. So it was planted June. It's probably been just super dry and everything too. And with all the grass pulling extra moisture That's out. what I think. Those roots are drying it out. But yeah. So I carried well on it when I planted it. But underneath, an inch down, it was muck. Oh, just shit. muck. Yeah. But it planted fine, yeah. carrying on top of the grass. And it came up right away. So it, they didn't lay yeah. in dry dirt or anything. Yeah. I mean, the spots where it got closed up, it, it looked pretty good. Yeah. But it's just this tiny little patch. Was there? Yeah, it's only acres? this is only seven acres. Seven acres. Yeah. Well, it was in it was in CRP for 15 years, so we had to tear some trees out, and we left, like Mitchell said, the uh, the marshmallow roast. The marshmallow roast. That'll be later. Happen later. Come one, come all. Come one, come all. <laughs> this is this is for us. This is sandier it's soil. Sandy. Yeah, because we're kind of on a ridge here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think just the. Uh, inconsistency on being able to get it down in and like some of this i mean you got like this root ball and whatnot right here that just with uh that air down force isn't going to be as you know it's not that responsive to getting it in consistently that's where you're going to have the tracks and everything going to right differently right too. yeah it's clearly inconsistent obviously there's not really going to be a soybean crop in the u.s this year so no, china you better hurry up and buy now it's all destroyed it's all it destroyed terrible. there's going to be nothing left nope. i didn't get a lot of it on camera but basically what mitchell said was i screwed up i did everything wrong and over the course of two years with enough equipment time and money i could make this all better again yeah it just just takes money and just Time and iron. Time and money and motivation. Well, the thing is that I don't want to have to get out of bed before 11. Well, yeah. Why would you want to do that? No. It'd you be ridiculous. Saying. I'm a millennial. <laughs> I deserve to sleep until lunch. Deserve to sleep and somebody else should fix your problem for you. <laughs> That's right. You want to go see my next amazing field? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, the next one's I even worse. It's just as amazing as this I, one. I am taking you to my absolute worst fields. Nice. And I'm bringing the internet with me <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's not embarrassing at all <laughs> so do you see that uh that beautiful field off in the distance oh, where there's nothing growing on it wow that looks nice yeah <laughs> we got tons of ruts out there from wow. trying to make anything happen beautiful by the way i am hands-free driving see see hands-free <laughs> see these really nice beans across the road those are not ours. This is this is ours. <laughs> this is ours over here. You left your South Dakota history book on the uh, in the ditch. Oh, there's my South Dakota history book. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Looks fun. Nice. And moldy. So this was a new piece that we rented this year. We've never farmed this. Never the S Still never have. <laughs> Still never. But it was wet. Needs a lot of drain tile or something. It didn't get t tilled up last fall, so we came in here this spring and tried to just lightly scratch it. And it, there was nowhere in the field that I could go 400 feet and not plug up with mud. I think mud. you more than lightly scratched this spot. You yeah. like really itched it hard. I was about that deep. Oh yeah. It just started pulling. And then as you can tell, so I lifted up, tried to turn and go back the other way and I couldn't even, even with the tillage tool up, I couldn't drive across here. No, yeah. It was just, it was leaking out of everywhere. That's nice. So you can see, it's still an inch down. It's still really wet, yeah, even in the worm turds that you got. Well, worm turds. You get worm turds anywhere. I found worm turds. Hey. Gross. We're going to dinner next. Lots of worm turds. But yeah, this stuff is super, just like mucky right down in here too. But I mean, it still seems like there's a decent amount of sand though. This is, that's the part that really surprised me is this is not that heavy of a field. Oh, it's sandy. We shouldn't have struggled like this here. Yeah. So the only variable to this field is was the fact the that it was not tilled last fall. That was the only variable that threw this field off versus every other field around it. Yeah. And even with it being kind of like sloped and everything, I would have thought it would have gotten out, but the ditch isn't going to take anything. No, this ditch doesn't. Ditch isn't gonna move anything. It drain tile would definitely help it, but there again, we could put we could put 30 or 40 grand worth of drain tile in it and fix the field, but we don't own this field. It's a rented field and we've never farmed it before. So you have to have that conversation with the landlord too and talk about, you know, what do we do? Yeah. How do you get stakeholders on board? How do you get stakeholders on board? That's a very, very good question, Todd. In fact, 
If you're interested in hearing us talk about that, you can check out the Fieldwork Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Somebody rounded this up. What are they thinking? Well, I had to make a good YouTube video, so I had to come in here and make some ruts and make everything look fancy. Tear you know, it all up. Complain about stuff a yeah, little. Yeah. Well, I mean... But you can see that the corn, the, the, the volunteer corn from last year grew up better where I rutted it. Oh, yeah. That's our cover crop. Yeah, corn cover crop. That's fine. Yeah. So give me, give me, give me 30 seconds, Mitchell. What do you think? So... What should I do here? Okay, so on this one, I'm thinking that here this fall... Or you could do it pretty much any time now that you have time before harvest. Yep. Come in and get this leveled off. I don't have time today though, because we're no, going no, no, down to Lake today. Minnetonka. Yeah, yeah we, well, we got to go out on the boat. Yeah. Yeah, we got to so, go on a sometime. boat. I don't have time for this farming no, stuff. So, yeah, yeah, we got way more important business <laughs> to attend to. But, but I would get it leveled off, and then come in with the cover crop and whatnot. Probably like some clover and your radishes would maybe work here because you're gonna because you can do this like now so would you drill them in or would you spread it and then do you a light spread tillage? it spread it and you can do a light a light tillage because if you're going to run your deeper tillage here now run your cult you know run your strip till rig essentially yeah to get it leveled out yeah and then spread it on over the top or you could spread see if i don't know what the liming situation or anything like that would be we don't need any lime here any lime. no everything is super high ph yeah it kind of looks like you can like see it in yeah. the soil that's a 7.8 oh pH. yeah okay yeah that's a brick is what they call those yeah. or a gravel road so so yeah spread on that cover crop or I mean, you can plant plant it however, and then yeah, potentially just a light cultivator or like a a harrow or something like that. Because you're yeah. gonna have a lot of these different clods and stuff too. You're still gonna have right. clods after you, right? So you can level that out, and most of that stuff will die here over the winter. And uh, but I'd be okay with a little bit of wheat or cereal rye or something like that that'll come back through in the spring. Wheat, wheat. Okay. And then you'll have your soybeans to go right into that, but or you don't have. You could have a cover crop that's not gonna survive the winter. Right. So right Something now you have winter time. Kills. Yeah, you have time and you have moisture. You know how heavy this camera gets holding it out oh there with goodness. one arm? You gotta be I strong. asked for 30 seconds, Mitchell. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's lunchtime now. It's lunchtime. You eat a lot of salad? Oh yeah. A little <laughs> rabbit food? Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs>